All right, let's get started. Uh, good morning to everybody on, on my behalf as well. Today is a, is a great day and we've been waiting for it for, for a long time because today we're launching something brand new. So Fibon Morning Talks, uh, warm welcome to everybody. So the idea is, is we're launching a new series called Fibon Morning Talks. And each, each month we're gonna gather around with, uh, with one person from the Fibon office. Today that's me representing and, and one very interesting and, and special guest. And today we have Jan Neormalainen as our, our first um, special guest and, and expert visitor. And we're going to be covering different current topic, topics um, that are, are relevant and interesting and, and inspiring for, for angel investors and, and those who are, are interested in angel investing. And we're going to kick off with a great topic. So today we're talking about portfolio building and, and, and investing in, in different sectors. Um, my name is Amel Gailey, and I'm the Managing Director of Fibon, for those of you who haven't met me. And um, today, as our, as our guest, as I said, is, is Janne Ormalainen. Janne is the former chair of the Fibon board. He's also a member of the Iban board. He's a serial entrepreneur and has, has over 30 different portfolio companies. So Janne, warmly welcome. Thanks, Amel, and uh, very good morning to everyone. Very nice to be here actually starting the new series. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to have um, um, time for questions and answers in the end as well. So any questions that you've ever wanted to, to ask Janne or, or hear about regarding portfolio building or, or investing in, in different sectors, today is a great opportunity for that. Um, let's have a look at our, our program. Can you see our slides all right? Um, let's just check that, uh, that we are, are technically up and running mm -hmm. as well. No slides oh, yet. Sorry, sorry. Oh. Yeah, my bad. I will share it. <laughs> I thought that I was sharing it the whole time. Okay, just a minute. Now, I guess. Yeah. Can so, you see it now? There we go. Yes. Um, right before we jump into to uh, Janis, Janis, um not presentation, but uh, but answers and insights, uh, let's warm up with a, with a few questions. Um, from, from all of you in, in the uh, online. So we've prepared a few questions and, and we wanna hear a little bit more about your, your backgrounds and what you're most looking forward to today. So please take out your, your cell phones or, or tablets and, and log on to menti.com. And, um, and when, you, when you hit the landing page, log in with the code 5927288. So that was five nine two seven two eight and eight and menti.com. And we have a let's give it a few few more uh, seconds and, and then we can we can have a look at what the first question is. So if we can we can have a look at the menti page as well. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so, perfect. So, question number one: Which industries are you interested in? And uh, please feel free to write write your your um, comments, and um, and they will soon be popping up on the screen. So, once again, the code was five nine two seven two eight and eight. So great, we have the first first question online. So, media. Now that is very interesting and, and uh, current. Janne, do you have any experiences from media? I do, mostly bad. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to, to hearing them. Okay, energy, education. I know education is a big one for you. Yep, it is. FinTech, any FinTech experiences? I do, yes. Yeah? I do have. Great, do we have some more industries coming up? Fashion, ooh, very good, diverse spread. How about what's your fashion background? I don't actually have any fashion uh, investments myself. Yeah. Great. Biochemistry. So really, really good spread. Another energy, travel, AI, telecom. Is there an industry that you're particularly interested in at the moment that you haven't invested in yet? Myself? Um... I actually don't have anything like that in mind. Uh, I've um, 
actually invested in quite a few industries. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at the, from a from a point of view of, you know, what we have, for example, on the on the screen now. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, AI is always interesting. I think, yeah. um, not from uh, necessarily from the development of AI point of view, but uh, how to use AI mm -hmm. in different other industries. So that's something that I'm keeping a very close eye myself. Yeah. All right. So very, very interesting spread. Education, fashion, clean tech, media, prop tech, energy, AI, travel, fintech, biochemistry, and, and telecom software. All right. So let's jump into the next question then. What are you looking forward to learning today? So insight, investing, martech, SaaS, and angels. Great. That's a good, good broad um, broad spear. I think we can we can cover most of that. So insights and investing, angels, Martech and SAS, an experience that is is definitely on the table today. All right. So let's let's um, let's wrap up the questions on on this end, and and jump into to Yana's story and and Yana's experiences, and then. Towards the end of our, our morning talks, we'll have another two questions on Menti, and we will have a, a designated time for Q&A as well. So any questions that you have for, for Janne on your mind, um, please please feel free to, to ask them at that point. Um, but great. Thanks for, for participating in, in our, our little morning survey. And, and let's jump to, to um, the, the actual content. So Janne, to get started, What's the story behind your most successful angel investment? Yeah, well, one of the uh, the stars in my uh, portfolio is is a company called LoopTech, mm -hmm. and uh, LoopTech actually is a very interesting story how I got involved. Uh, so originally, um, a common friend uh, introduced Mikko Kesti to me, mm -hmm. um, just asking that you know if I could advise Mikko. And, and I said, yes, like I often say that, you know, I, I like <laughs> to advise uh, uh, starting entrepreneurs. And, um, and we met actually in the, in the Helsinki city and uh, city center and uh, had a cup of coffee. Uh, he had an idea. I really liked Mikko as an entrepreneur, but uh, I thought that the, uh, the idea was, was very early stage. Yeah. And, um, and then I went home. I, I actually just remember that my wife asked that uh, um, how was the meeting, and I said uh, it was it was a good meeting. I like the entrepreneur, but I'm not going to get involved. And um, uh, funnily enough, then uh, that evening uh, I had left my iPad mm -hmm. on our kitchen table, uh, and Mikko's presentation or pitch deck was open there. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't really a pitch deck; I think it was like three slides or something. And um, and my wife had taken my laptop just to do some, or, or my iPad actually to do something uh, something else with that, and um, and uh, she actually started reading Mikko's uh, mm -hmm. pitch deck. And um, and then uh, you know a few minutes later she said, uh, "Yana, you really need to get involved with this <laughs> thing." And um, um, actually she had uh, very much insight into that business because uh, she has he, she actually had worked uh, a couple of years for a company called Vacom, mm. which was in the same general area um, as uh, where Luptec was planning to go. So um, then uh, she actually so my wife actually changed my mind about getting involved with Luptec, yeah. and okay. I guess now the rest of the rest is history that uh, Luptec <laughs> was uh, you know uh, selected as uh, one of the top three uh, uh, startup companies in Finland by Kaupalehti just now, and uh, yeah. uh, as one of the top ten companies by Arvokopeli last year. So, <laughs> so a lot has happened after that. But uh, yeah. but it's it's an in really interesting how uh, this kind of random event can really change the course of how you get involved with something. Exactly. Oh, that's a great story. Yeah. So I guess key key lesson is is always ask your your wife or your partner you know <laughs> for advice. Well, I think it's there is actually some truth to that because yeah. uh, um, I think uh, if you if you have a bit of an outside view, mm -hmm. um, then then you can actually have more objective, mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, you know, perhaps uh, angle to it than than you know often uh, yeah. us angels have. Yeah. Um, 
but in this particular case, my wife uh, clearly had much more insight yeah. into the business itself yeah. uh, than, than what I had. Yeah, very interesting. But then if we, if we talk about your kind of portfolio as a whole, you have, you have more than 30 companies there. How, how did you end up or how, how, what were kind of the steps that you took to, to your, from your first investment to, to where you are now? If I would be lying and, you know, making a good story, I would, of <laughs> course, say that I had a plan and, you know, this happened, uh, yeah. uh, happened by, uh, by planning, but it didn't. Uh, I think it, uh, it all has happened more mm -hmm. by accident mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, I have um, in my, my whole angel investment, through my whole in angel investment career, I, I, I really invested into companies which I um, like the idea, but more importantly, where I uh, trust the entrepreneur that uh, he or she can actually do the job. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that uh, more than, uh, than, for example, focusing on a particular industry, I have always focused on the team. Mm -hmm. That, you know, if the team is some, if I trust that the team can do a good job, um, then, then I think that uh, it's, it's something that I would be interested in looking in. Mm -hmm. Do you have any any kind of tips there? Because because we, we talk about the team a lot and the importance of the team in, in um, the, the execution and, and the kind of eventual success of the company. So are there any like certain questions you always ask the team or certain background checks that you do? Do you have some kind of um, um, secret per, per recipe there? I, I think that that's uh, of course it's you know focusing on the team is uh, is such a cliche in the in the yeah. angel investment world. But, uh, but I think that the key to it is that you actually spend enough time yeah. with the team, with the entrepreneur, uh, to understand how they think, if, you're, if your thinking is aligned. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and especially, I personally like uh, teams that are very diverse, mm -hmm. that they have done enough mistakes, they, uh, they have experiences from different uh, uh, fields of, the, uh, of life, mm -hmm. uh, that they, uh, they really kind of... Uh, um, have perhaps gotten over the naive, yeah. naive kind of a thinking that you know they they will um, make the next Facebook or whatever, but yeah. uh, but that they have had all the different experiences and and can have a realistic mm. uh, plans, realistic uh, uh, thoughts about how how things are to be achieved. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we talk a little bit more about kind of selecting the right startups, so so team is if as of course applies to, to all different sectors. Mm. Then if we think about, you have, you have hardware companies, software companies, education, kind of um, all of these different ones. So do you have, do you have different ways of, of selecting each different, uh, when, you, when you look at different industries and sectors? I don't think I do. I, I think that it more uh, boils down to, um, uh, you know, of course the, the team like we talked, mm. but, uh, but then the scalable idea as a second thing. So, so obviously, you know, the team is, is uh, something perhaps that I like, uh, like to look at first, mm -hmm. but, but then still the business has to be yeah. having a viable uh, scalability. So, uh, so that, you know, I, I personally like to invest into, into companies which are uh, more global mm -hmm. or, or kind of blo perhaps uh, born global in that sense that, uh, that, you know, the opportunity is, is global. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that also I can help their best uh, mm. uh, if that's, uh, that's where the company is going. So it's the scalability of the business. You know, some businesses are not scalable. They can still be good mm. business, uh, but, uh, but not necessarily mm. a business that I would invest into. Yeah, yeah. Um, 30, 30 portfolio companies is a lot. That's a, that's a lot to manage. So kind of what are your, your building blocks on, on good portfolio management then if you think of it as a, as a whole? I don't necessarily look at my portfolio as, uh, as something that I manage in a, in a very professional way. I probably should, uh, <laughs> but uh, that's, you know, that's one of the, uh, the great things of being an, uh, an angel investor yeah. is that uh, you don't actually need to report to anybody uh, how you're managing things. Yeah. Um, now, I, I think it all boils down, you know, if you have a lot of uh, portfolio companies, I mm -hmm. think you need to have uh, um, a network of investors mm -hmm. that you invest with. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult to, uh, uh, to, to really professionally uh, even uh, understand what the, what the companies are doing. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, the way I look at it is that uh, I have few investor friends, uh, angel investor friends uh, that I often invest with, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we divide the work in, in such a way that you know, okay, so we all invest into this company X, mm -hmm. but uh, it's you who then manages that company and uh, and kind of reports it back to, to the other one investors that uh, that you know this is how it's doing and uh, and so forth and. Um, and that way you can actually have a fairly large portfolio of companies. Yeah. Um, I don't really uh, do passive investments that much myself that I would just put money into something. Uh, that's kind of uh, a little bit different than how yeah. I see angel investing in general. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, if, if someone kind of listening now online is a is a fairly new, new angel investor who's looking at, at a new sector for them. So let's say, for example, media or, or bioeconomy. So so what would be your kind of tips to to go about it? I think we've covered a few. So so asking, you know, other people's advice who have experienced and, and spending time with the team. But what are some other things when, when you look at a new industry? Well, I think in, in the way I have gotten into, mm -hmm. into new industries has been a relatively simple formula. And that has been always that uh, there, has all, there has always been somebody that I have trusted mm -hmm. um, that I have then dared to actually invest into that, uh, that company or that industry sector. Uh, say um, uh, some years ago, um, I had no idea about anything related to education. Mm -hmm. And um, and then uh, um, there was a, there was a lady who wanted to actually establish uh, a chain of daycares, mm. and I I have to say I had like no idea how you know that industry works or whatever, but I did trust her, yeah. and um, and I trusted her to that extent that I knew that if I put my money in this uh, venture, that she's gonna make uh, a real effort to actually uh, make this uh, a big success. And um, and that happened, um, and I learned on the way. And now I think I know something about education <laughs> also yeah. beyond uh, the, uh, the the daycare business. Uh, so yeah. so I think that it's it's a key to have somebody who you trust mm -hmm. uh, that you can actually then uh, um, tag along, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, exactly. Okay, very very interesting. But then it's not necessarily you don't have to know that much about the, the, the sector necessarily before you invest, as long as you have someone you, you trust and who has the substantial knowledge. I have to understand the logic, how the yeah. business is done, um, but that's relatively easy usually yeah. to understand. Um, and so uh, so if I, I would not be able to you know, invest mm -hmm. into something which I don't understand, mm -hmm. but, uh, but usually uh, the logics are not that different from industry to yeah. industry. Um, it's just that the uh, the subject knowledge uh, yeah. is is different. Yeah. So I'm I'm been quite open to actually invest in the different uh, ideas mm -hmm. or different industry ideas. Yeah. Okay. Well, you you see a lot of pitch decks and you hear a lot of pitches, um, um, hundreds probably in a in a regular Many. year. <laughs> yes. You're 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 very active. And you also through your role in Ivan, you see a lot of um, um, European startups as well. So, so sure. not only from the Nordic region. So, so I'm very, very curious as from from your point of view. What what have you seen as the, the kind of fastest going industries now in 2020? Now, if you're kind of not focusing on Corona, but but on on the like general. Um, well, of course, because of Corona, mm -hmm. we we had this boom in the uh, in the online world. I mean, yeah. that's for sure. And uh, and many of the uh, the companies that. Um, uh, that we're doing remote work related stuff and so forth um, mm -hmm. obviously have benefited great uh, greatly from uh, from the situation itself now i think that the uh, the big uh, big change that we we are going through in in many industries is that uh, the um, for example technology is fundamentally changing the way industries work talking about for example artificial intelligence um, I personally have invested in two very deep tech artificial intelligence companies, and uh, I think that they will change the world. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but I think that the uh, the bigger thing is actually not so much the uh, the technology how artificial intelligence works itself, but uh, but how you utilize that in the different industries, yeah. and that I see as a, as a 
a very big wave coming. Uh, it's happening, but it's not happening yet, perhaps to the extent that uh, even people have been expecting. Mm. I, I think it's going to be coming uh, as a much stronger wave. Yeah. Uh, and changing industries really that uh, how the logic works, uh, you know, changing the uh, um, uh, the jobs that people have been doing to uh, to actually uh, for computers to do, and it's it's really happening. It's yeah. not something science fiction. It's it's really happening. Yeah, yeah, def definitely. Uh, I think I think it's always fun to to a little bit project into the future. So so if we we kind of take out take out your your crystal ball, what would you think is we, which industries will will boom in twenty twenty five? I think um, probably a oh, lot, great. A lot of <laughs> <laughs> so we then we'll come uh, come back to this uh, you know in five years time. Uh, exactly. How, how well I predicted. Yes, we will remember well, this. <laughs> I mean, the thing is that uh, one of the industries that uh, that I really like at the moment is education. Yeah. And education, in the sense that uh, only three percent of the education spent goes at the moment to digital. Mm -hmm. So ninety-seven is still very traditional, and uh, and I personally believe that uh, that's all to change. Mm -hmm. um, I also believe that in education, uh, you know, there's uh, there's hundreds and thousands of different edtech solutions, um, which most of them are failing. Uh, they are not. They are really failing to solve the real problem, okay. and uh, and I think that um, over the next five years we will see such a tremendous change in the education sector, mm -hmm. uh, both uh, towards digitalization, but also how the systemic change will happen in education. Um, the education world is not really well functioning at the moment. It's mm -hmm. it's pretty much in a crisis, and now the you know this uh, this pandemic obviously has. Has shown us that uh, yeah. that it's uh, it's a very big crisis. Mm -hmm. So so I really like education sector, um, but the thing is that there are only very few ideas mm -hmm. that I personally believe will be like tremendously successful. I think some are successful today, but I think uh, we are yet to see mm -hmm. the really successful um, initiatives uh, in the education sector, and uh, and that's something that I I believe will happen over the next five years. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting point because because there is a lot of ha lot happening in the education sector and, and there's a lot of startups but really interesting to hear from, so from your point of view and for the ones you've seen they're they're not necessarily tackling the right problem or the, yeah I, I think they are tackling parts of the problem okay but yeah. not uh, not necessarily you know the the systemic problem the systemic yeah. uh, uh, problem is is a very difficult to, mm. to solve and um, and I will I, I I would predict that uh, we will see the companies uh, uh, emerge within the next five years that we'll yeah. be able to do that and they will be the stars yeah. uh, that, uh, that we all want to invest into. Really, <laughs> really, really interesting. Any other sector you want to highlight on, on from the future kind of? Of course, they, there are many, many uh, sectors that I believe will, mm -hmm. uh, uh, will boom over the next, uh, next years. Uh, Fintech is not no brainer. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know that uh, there is such a big change in uh, in the banking, in yeah. the uh, uh, asset management sector at the moment. Uh, artificial intelligence will fundamentally change mm -hmm. the whole industry, and uh, and so forth. So so yes, there are great opportunities there, uh, but in many others as well. I I, I think that um, we should not always look at the uh, the you know the what is the, the star industry yeah. and always um, uh, invest into that. I think that the very yeah. traditional industries uh, can be good investments yeah. when they utilize, for example, new technology, say exactly. artificial intelligence uh, utilized in a machinery building or, or in yeah. a very traditional industry can actually be an extremely good uh, uh, investment for angels. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely really, really good point. Any sectors that you're steering away from that, that you, you either have invested and won't invest in again or just are not for you? Well, some are uh, sectors that I personally believe are, are difficult to in, invest into um, as an angel. Mm -hmm. um, I think some medical sectors are, are difficult because they are so capital intensive. Yeah. Um, because the lead times are so uh, so long, and uh, and then thirdly, because I don't understand enough. Um, sure. But yeah, uh, yeah. but um, yeah, so I, I haven't really invested invested I think to any medical, mm. you know, even me 
medical software yeah. uh, kind of companies. Um, that's something that I, I shy away from. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, if, you, if you would kind of bottle down your, your top three advice on, on sector investing, how would you, you kind of share your, your knowledge? As, as a new uh, yeah, sector exactly. investor. Yeah. Well, I, I would say that the, uh, the first one really is that, uh, that you have to have somebody who you trust mm -hmm. uh, to guide you to that industry. Mm -hmm. Uh, it can be um, uh, a fellow investor. Yeah. It can be um, uh, the entrepreneur if you mm -hmm. trust the entrepreneur. But um, but somebody has to give you that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult. Then secondly, I think you uh, you as a as an investor have to still understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. So if if you um, if you know if I would be given a, a deck uh, about some very deep deck. Uh, yeah. Um, idea which i don't have a clue of what, what's happening i would not invest into that yeah regardless uh, you know how how good fellow investors i would have mm -hmm. um and then the, I, I think that the team yeah team, i mean uh, it's uh, it's still so that uh, you know it's, it's a, another cliche but uh, um, a good team mm -hmm. will uh, will make even a bad idea fly yeah and uh, and it is often so so um it mm -hmm. Regardless if you're investing into into an industry that you know or you don't know, mm. team, team, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, really, really interesting. Um, I'm going to ask one last question, and then we're gonna we're gonna open up the floor for for Q and A. So so any of your your questions and thoughts. But but my my last question will be, you know, if if you look back at the days when you were starting out as an angel investor, what's the best advice that you received from from another angel? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, I should have received uh, <laughs> that advice that, uh, you know, um, only very small tickets in yeah. the beginning uh, because you will make mistakes. Yeah. Um, luckily, I, I still made uh, fairly small investments uh, for the first companies uh, uh, because my, uh, my very first uh, angel investment, I think, was 2005. Mm -hmm. um, was into a company, a technology company that was bankrupt, uh, you know, 13 months <laughs> after the investment. So, so you know, um, when you are a starting investor, angel investor, you you ought to make some investment um, yeah. investment uh, uh, mistakes. But at the same time, that's the learning uh, that uh, that we all sure. go through. Sure. So, so I think that uh, I should have gotten <laughs> the the advice that you know, be aware of the mistakes you will make in the beginning. Yeah. That's a that's a great one. All right, so let's let's open up menti.com and um, there's a there's a new code this time. So if I can ask you once again to to um, open up menti.com and this time the the login code is nine two zero two eight five and three. And um, we'll we'll have a chance to to hear your your questions and um, your your thoughts on on sector investing and, and portfolio management, and, and we have good time for that. Um, so the code once again is is nine two zero two eight five and three. Um, and while while we wait for the the uh, questions to to come rolling in. Um, I just want to ask one one question. What's what's your kind of um, most memorable? I know we started with your your most successful investment, and we've gone per perhaps to to um, ended up with your probably fastest bankrupt <laughs> investment. <laughs> but if, if there's something between these two, like the the best success and and the the kind of most memorable um, learning money or opirat, <laughs> as we say in in Finnish, um, is there another another story that comes to mind? Well, I think most of the investments still are, you know, uh, uh, fairly kind of uh, traditional in that sense mm -hmm. that, uh, that uh, for example, uh, uh, I have invested to, to a lot of companies that uh, have gone, come through the, the FIBAN deal flow. Mm -hmm. We have uh, established the, the you know, FIBAN syndicate, uh, done the work together and, and made, made an investment mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and so forth. So. So I have a lot of stories like that, um, but of course the uh, perhaps the, uh, the the funniest or the the greatest stories are the ones that, where you know we make uh, 
make an angel syndicate, we really uh, give a give a chance for the entrepreneur to start scaling and and so forth. And yeah. and when those become successful, uh, yeah. I think that uh, that's a that's a very nice experience for the mm -hmm. investor investors, but uh, but also for the entrepreneurs. Yeah. And um, and yes, I have I have great uh, great companies uh, that I have been able to invest into. Uh, one that comes to my mind, for example, is uh, is a company called Ogoshi, mm -hmm. which uh, which was originally a fee fund syndicate that mm -hmm. I was leading uh, some years ago, and uh, now is is growing extremely mm -hmm. fast, and um, and now has been um, has been funded. The latest round was uh, was funded by a VC company. So yeah. so I, I think that that's a that's a fairly traditional way of how angels yeah. get into uh, into a company, but at the same time, I think that's uh, that's a great story. Yeah, that's how it should work. Definitely, yeah, definitely. So we have a, we have a few questions. Let's start with the first one. What is your average first investment at this time? Um, it, it can be um, the, the scale is quite uh, large actually. Mm -hmm. um, uh, those of you who don't know me, um, I'm actually involved in this uh, European Angel Fund um, scheme, which, uh, which means that, uh, that I can uh, I can utilize the, uh, the European Investment Fund uh, uh, money also to leverage my investments. So uh, so basically doubling the investment in that sense. Um, it's it's typically I would say that if it's a very very early stage company, like something that has really started. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and doesn't need that much money. It can be as as little as like twenty, thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, on the other side, uh, uh, to uh, ranging two hundred, hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. as a first investment. Okay. Uh, so that's the range, but uh, yeah. there's not a typical ticket that I would uh, I would put. I, I think it's very dependent on the company situation. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But but so average first investment, the smaller end, twenty, thirty. Yes. And, and could go up higher. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you ensure that you get access to the most attractive ideas? <laughs> um, well, I, I, I think that the, uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, I, I think it's two things. Um, one needs to belong to a good angel network. Yes. Um, I think Piban has done tremendous uh, work in uh, in the deal flow, and uh, I'm very very happy how what kind of companies I have invested into mm -hmm. from the from the Piban deal flow. But on the other hand, I think you need to have also the uh, the fellow investors yeah. um, that are also looking at companies, and then you can actually look a bit uh, with a much wider yeah. scope and. Um, and I perhaps uh, put even more emphasis at the moment into the my own networks to, to actually have connections with the kind of a people yeah. that I would like to invest with. And when we all look through the deal flow, then mm -hmm. I think that we, we have access to quite good companies. Yeah. Um, so it's, this, is, an, this yeah. is a network business. It's, it's uh, exactly. that you need to be able to uh, establish good networks uh, yeah. among the investors. And then, uh, then I think you have a, have a better chance of uh, being able to uh, uh, see the right companies. Yeah, exactly. So it, it is in a way, it's a, it's a solo sport, but it's a team sport as well. It's, it's definitely both. a team sport. Yeah. And um, and even more so, it's it's becoming more and more globally uh, played team sport yeah. at the moment. Yeah. All right, we have a lot of questions rolling in. The next one, in how many companies are you a member of the board? And uh, not many, actually, not at, not at the moment. I am um, I, I think I'm, um, I'm a member of a board in five companies at the moment. Uh, chairman of the board in uh, um, in in uh, four. Mm -hmm. So um, this is um, for me at the, at this very moment when I'm uh, I'm also I consider myself also an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, something that uh, is pretty much the limit. I, I mm -hmm. can't handle yeah. too many companies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so why education segment segment has not been successful successful even though so many companies are over there in Finland? Is it because Finnish schools don't have enough money to invest? Very good question. Um, this is something that I could talk uh, in length, but mm -hmm. uh, but let's put it this way that uh, 
I personally believe, uh, like I said earlier, that, uh, that there are a lot of companies that are solving a part of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not necessarily helping at all. Um, it can be a good business for the particular company, but it's not necessarily solving the problem we, uh, we are facing in the, in the education sector. Um, so, so I think they are, there's a need for systemic change. So that's, that's number one. Mm -hmm. And, and then, uh, um, uh, through that, I, I believe that the opportunities will come, uh, for greater digitalization. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so in a way, uh, you could also look at it that way that, that, that when you, when you're doing the traditional schools and traditional, uh, universities as we're doing at the moment, uh, and then adding digital mm -hmm. technology on top of that, that's not necessarily changing the, the way we, we, we should be doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, we are just adding the burden, mm -hmm. but we should actually take the, the burden away and, and yeah. digitalize uh, all the parts that can be digitalized. So that's, that's what I mean by the education uh, uh, sector. I don't think the education sector in Finland is a very mm -hmm. weird one because it's very uh, government controlled, mm -hmm. which it's not in, in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Finland is not really a, you know, a model country for, for any ed tech or, or education mm -hmm. companies to, uh, yeah. to look into. Okay. Um, so the next question is, is, first of all, thank you. And the voice of the real professional was heard. So, so um, thanks for the feedback. Great. Um, what's the importance of megatrends when you make a decision to invest or not? How close do you follow them? I do follow the mega trends, but at the same time, I, I, I think that uh, there can be excellent investment opportunities in, uh, you know, in, in businesses or in sectors which, uh, which are, you know, even dying away. Yeah. I, I, I think that uh, we should not, uh, I would not emphasize the, the mega trends mm -hmm. in angel investing. I, I think that comes then later in the, in the, in the, the life of a, of a company. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, for angels and having good angel investment uh, exits, I believe that any industry can be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what about, there's a question about, about kind of when you join the team, what kind of expertise do you bring to a team uh, when it is not the domain on the exact business? So what is the continuum in you that comes from the team? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I consider myself that I can bring uh, expertise in um, in obviously financing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think uh, in globalization or, or bringing the business into into the global okay. scene. I, I think I've done that enough times that uh, that I've done enough mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. And and then obviously you know running a business in general. Um, I, I think any business is uh, is run in a mm -hmm. fairly similar way. Um, and so, uh, so those are the, uh, the areas of expertise that I can bring in, in any company. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have, we have two more questions. So, so one, do you have some kind of Excel sheet to follow the portfolio with KPI development to systematically compare the investment cases with valuations on paper potential, uh, and to which further invest to and which not, or rather only run it on your head. So. I do have an Excel sheet that I, I, I have about the, uh, the investments. Uh, um, I, I don't follow KPIs in mm -hmm. a very strict way. I, I do follow them, but mm -hmm. not in a very strict way. I, I still think that, uh, you know, a, a good conversation with the entrepreneur mm -hmm. is, is much better than uh, looking at different uh, KPIs and mm -hmm. how they have developed. Um, how I make a decision about uh, whether or not to invest into uh, further invest into a company it's uh, it's really based on on the business situation that they have yeah. um and and how how it has been developing yeah let me just ask a, ask a little bit of follow-on question on that is, is how kind of systematic are you in in diversifying between sectors or or you or do you just when you see an interesting company regardless of the sector would you choose to invest so could you actually end up in a situation where where half of your portfolio consists of a single sector or are you strategic in that that it's it's mixed i'm definitely not strategic uh -huh. in that i i think it's more random than, than yeah. anything else so uh, yeah. i um i i don't use any portfolio theory for that no, <laughs> no way. i'm a big fan of that you you <laughs> as you know yes okay so we have a final question um what is the typical valuation of early stage companies um that you invest in 
valuation? Mm. That's that's a very good question. Um, it can be it can be really anything. Mm. In a, in a very early stage, I think that uh, that we typically talk about uh, you know um, uh, one million plus minus kind of companies, um, and uh, and then when we uh, enter to uh, the, the you know follow-on rounds mm. or, or so forth, uh, they can get, get up to, to like several yeah. million euro valuations. I wouldn't put so much um, emphasis on the valuation itself. Mm. I, I think valuation is, is obviously important for the returns, but, uh, but at the same time, it's also important to make investments into good companies. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, I would rather make an investment uh, with a bad valuation to a company mm. uh, that, that's going to be a, yeah. the next star rather than, than trying to, to optimize the valuation. But, uh, but yes, this is, uh, this is the, uh, always the, the question for age of investing, that, yes. Uh, yes. what's the valuation, how it, how it works. But uh, mm. uh, yeah, the range uh, for my investments, it, it's typically, uh, you know, from, from like a one million mark mm. to several million marks. I mm. think the, uh, the highest valuation that I made an investment last year was mm. 25 million free money. Okay. So, so that's uh, already like starts to be a very high end, a very high end yeah. for angels. Absolutely, great. Time is flying. Thank you so much, Janne. Thank you for for your sharing your insights and and your experiences. Thank you, everybody online as well. Uh, as we mentioned, this is a monthly series that we're kicking off today. And, and each month we're going to cover a different topic. We have a, a different person from, from the FIBAN office hosting and, and we have a, a different expert and, and special guest sharing their insights. And um, our final question of the day is, is what topics would you like us to cover in the future? So um, we, have, we have two already set up. Our, our November monthly talk will, will cover diversity and inclusion from, from an angel investor's perspective, what, how an angel should, um, should, should go about it and, and think about it in, in regards to their own, own portfolio companies. And our December monthly talk will cover lead angel compensation models, which is a, another hot topic. But any other topics, we're very curious to hear, hear from you. What are th some things that are, are bubbling on your mind? They, they can be very you know, conventional um, angel investing topics or, or something out of the box. So, so please um, share, share your thoughts with us. And, um, and while, we, while we wait for, for something to pop up on the screen, let me, let me ask from you, Jan, any, any special requests on topics? I think uh, this... Um, um you know, cross-border investing is, mm. is kind of an interesting topic, which, mm. uh, which I do know, in, you know, interests many people and, mm. uh, and not that many people are doing cross-border. So, yeah. so I think that could be a, <clears throat> could be a topic that, mm. uh, that we could uh, maybe talk about in the future. Yeah. And also what are the challenges in, mm. um, in, you know, investing into, for example, other European countries or, or countries outside Europe as yeah. well. Uh, so, um, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Cross-border investing, we will, we will definitely put that on the agenda. Great. It's, it's quarter past nine, so to, time for us to wrap up. Um, have a great day. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, for, for those of you FIBAN members, please, please check out our events calendar at FIBAN.org slash events. We have our next FIBAN Academy training, for example, already next Wednesday. Welcome online to, to listen to that as well. And, and for those of you who are not FIBAN members yet, but are interested in, in angel investing, please feel free to, to reach out to any of us at the office to, to hear more or, or then um, have a look at our, our new webpage, FIBAN.org slash join. Um, but there we have it. It's a wrap. Our, our next two upcoming sessions, as, as we mentioned, are, are November 12th, diversity and inclusion, and, and December 10th, lead angel compensation models. And then I can almost guarantee that one of our, our um, first 2021, first quarter 2021 sessions will be about cross-border investing. Um, but please reach out to us if, if you have any thoughts or if you have any, um, any feedback, you will also have a, a feedback survey in your email shortly from us. But that's it. Thank you. Have an awesome day. And, and thank you thank so you. much, Janne. Thank you. So have a great day. Yes, <laughs> <laughs>